This is my patient Lisa during her initial exam. She tests strong. This is a flexure withdrawal reflex. I'm also in lower back. Go. It's normal. Good. Go. Here, however, when we do a cross cord reflexes, we can see she's still facilitating. This is abnormal. Now it's normal for Lisa, she has a tendency to be in a hyper anxiety stress state. But it's not normal for her nervous system. Here she should have facilitation and here she should have inhibition and she does not, it's abnormal. We're gonna check the contralateral side. She has strength on the left, which is correct, but she also has strength on that right, that's abnormal. Here I'm going in and doing a little trigger point work and mobilization of her C7 area. I want to go back and recheck her inhibitory reflexes and now they are being on display as normal. So this weakness is normal in this test. Here she should have weakness on the left and here she should have weakness on the right. Relax for a second. I want to recheck that because there's a limited amount of time that you can test the reflex after doing mobilization. Push out. And it's normal. So I had went past the limits right, of time in doing that initial test. Here with Lisa, I do a little pulsing in the pulling of her neck to break up some any scar tissue, give a little pulsing energy into the tissues themselves, help elongate the tissues and the ligaments before her adjustment. Once again, we're adjusting the C7 level. Here to help, I'm using my knee, that thrust. Push up. Okay, that's much better. Go. And Good. finally, Push up. these is displaying normally. Good. It's taken me a while to understand how her Go. system works. This should be inhibited. Yes. So Lisa, I don't need to test all her strength yeah. responses. They're typically normal. It's her inhibitory or weak responses that I usually need to test because they are facilitated when they should not be. Here I want to make sure her toes, her plantar muscles, her ankle, her calcaneus and talus are have a little flexibility in them. Remember, we take an estimated 10,000 steps a day. So if your feet are articulating improperly, that's going to be sending abnormal proprioceptive inputs into the brain. I don't like posterior adjustments, so I do anteriorities. On your tummy. Lisa, foot towards your back. Go. Good. Here I'm checking Lisa's hamstrings as testing muscles. I want to see what impact the gallant reflex has. It should cause inhibition on this left hamstring. It does not. I push the sacrum to the left of the table. It still is not inhibited. I push it to the right, do the gallant reflex. Still no inhibition. She has a tendency to have this hip rotate anterior, pushing it posterior and doing the gallant reflex. Now the hamstring's inhibited. This is normal. Here I'm doing some trigger point therapy on the glutes, all the posterior muscles of the body.
This is a long lever move for the ilium, just to use the leg as a fulcrum to help rotate that ilium backwards. Roll with me. There you go. Go walk for me. It's so impressive. I like that. The pattern you have is a pattern that means typically the lower neck is out and causes all your muscles to be facilitated. So with that adjustment, that should calm you down. The effect after is really cool for me. Because I live with like this kind of backdrop anxiety um, for so long that when it gets quiet, it is so... It's like imagine having tinnitus. And then it stops. And you're like... It is, it is like... You, there are times after I've been here when... I'll go, I'll go home, or I, I just want to go home and like listen to the silence in myself because it's so different. <laughs>